Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. And we thank you for joining us tonight. That breaking news is out of Oakland University. We've learned in the past few hours the school has reached a tentative agreement with unionized faculty. This comes just hours before classes were set to begin. Two sides have been in talks now for weeks. The major sticking point involved pay. Oakland University says the union had been demanding a 30% increase over five years, right? It is unclear at this hour how the deal closed or didn't get close to that number. We're going to learn more when the union votes on the deal in the coming days. However, we know the agreement does double the retirement stipend for some lecturers. Uh, for now, students can expect classes to begin as scheduled tomorrow. In a statement, President Ora Hirsch Peskowitz said, uh, quote, our faculty members' contributions are critical to our mission and achieving our strategic goals. This generous package demonstrates our commitment to their continued success. Obviously, much more to come. New tonight, we're hearing from the family of the 14-year-old boy shot and killed near the state fair over the weekend. The fair is for kids. That's the place for kids to go. So I, did, I, I wasn't expecting nothing or would have ever thought that it would be a tragedy, like a tragic incident would occur, no. 14-year-old Darian D.D. Dee Dee Davis was the one who lost his life that night. Jacqueline Francis spoke with his mother today. Jacqueline, this is uh, actually not the only child she's lost to gun violence. His mother is no stranger to grief. A few years ago, her 17 year old son was shot and killed during a drive by shooting at an apartment. And then over the weekend, her 14 year old son was shot and killed outside the state fair. Take a listen. The last thing that he said to me was, we gonna make it like and it brought tears to my eyes. Vertia Gilbert says her son Darian Davis had big dreams. My son just wanted to play football and make it to the league. He loved being around his family and his friends, loved going to school, just making people laugh. 14 year old Darian had just started his sophomore year at University High School in Ferndale. Over Labor Day weekend, he and a friend went to the state fair in Novi, where Darian was shot and killed. Um, from my understanding, it was an altercation between him and some other boys and the boy went back to his car, grabbed a weapon, and that's just, that was the end of it. Darian's friend was also shot, but Vertia says he's been released from the hospital. I just want to under all the gun violence to end with these children. Like, I don't know what's going on, what's making them so angry. Novi police are still searching for Darian's killer, sifting through social media videos and other tips for clues. I know that somebody knows something. It was it was too many people there. So I know that somebody has some type of information and we just want justice for Darian. You can only imagine that family's grief. Anyone with information is asked to call Novi police. Reporting live, Jacqueline Francis, Local 4. Just a just awful situation. All right, Jacqueline. Workers at Marathon Petroleum's Detroit refinery are expected to strike tomorrow. The strike would involve more than 250 members of Teamsters Local 283. Marathon told Local 4 earlier tonight the union told the company the walkout would happen tomorrow morning. The two sides have been in talks on a new contract since December of last year. Marathon says despite the strike, operations at the plant should remain unaffected. We hope to have a crew at the plant when this happens, and you can learn more tomorrow morning on Local 4. A tight presidential race, but not as tight for U.S. Senate. Tonight, we unveil more of the results of our new Local 4 Detroit News poll. At 5, we showed you the race between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris, pretty much a dead heat in Michigan. But in the race for the open U.S. Senate seat, right now, Alyssa Slotkin has a strong lead on Republican Mike Rogers. We ask if the election were held today, who would get your vote for the seat being vacated by Debbie Stabenow? And Slotkin, as you can see, has a lead of 8.5 points. 43.5% to 35% for Mike Rogers. He's got some work to do in what is already a very expensive race. Now let's go back to the presidential race where Donald Trump leads Kamala Harris by just a point in Michigan, so that's inside the margin of error. We had some interesting findings as we dug into those numbers. We asked, would Kamala Harris or Donald Trump do a better job of handling the nation's economy? 
Big lead for Donald Trump, 52% to 39% for Harris. Who would do a better job of handling foreign affairs? Again, it's Donald Trump, 49% to 44% for Harris. Who would do a better job of securing the border and handling immigration? Again, it's Donald Trump, 56% to 37% for Harris. But we also ask about presidential qualities. We ask, who do you trust more? It's Kamala Harris, 45% now to 42%. Who would you say is more honest? Again, it's Harris, bigger lead, 45% to 36% for Trump. Which candidate would you say is smarter? It's Harris, 47% to 43%. I ask our pollster, Richard Zuba, about these findings, and he puts it rather simply. If voters decide this based on qualities, she wins. If voters decide this based on issues, Trump wins. Fascinating. I assume. There you go. We'll have more of our poll findings coming up tomorrow. In fact, at 5 p.m. tomorrow afternoon, how voters feel about several international issues, including the Israel-Hamas war and those issues. How will they impact their ballots? Meanwhile, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. will not be able to remove himself from the ballots in the key swing states like Michigan and Wisconsin. The decision comes as the days after he ended his presidential campaign and endorsed former President Donald Trump. Kennedy is on the ballot in Michigan as a candidate for the Natural Law Party. A spokesperson with the Secretary of State's office told NBC News minor party candidates cannot withdraw. Kennedy says he'll continue to try to get his name off ballots in states where he could play a spoiler role for former President Trump. A former Detroit Medical Center mental health technician is suing the hospital, alleging she was fired after raising the flag to managers that two people within two months had been raped inside the facility psychiatric ward. Lakeisha Davis is seeking $10 million, claiming DMC's drastic cuts of nurses and technicians in the mental health ward put patients at risk. Today, protesters gathered outside the DMC demanding safer work conditions and accountability from the hospital. I feel for my patients. So I feel for them. I'm worried about them. I just want them to be safe. I mean, we're talking about patients who are getting raped. DPD says they are aware of both alleged incidents. One of those cases has been investigated and sent over to the prosecutor's office for possible charges. The other, though, remains under investigation. We have learned local leaders are meeting tomorrow to talk about the disposal of radioactive waste at the Wayne Disposal Facility in Van Buren Township. The story garnered a lot of reaction mm -hmm. from our viewers, and we've taken a lot of calls from concerned community members over the past few weeks. The waste is coming load by load and about 25 semi-trucks per week. Congresswoman Debbie Dingell and Wayne County Executive Warren Evans will be speaking with representatives from Eagle and the EPA about the plan. Leaders are expected to raise concerns about the transport and storage of the dangerous waste. The meeting is set for 6 p.m. and we hope to bring you updates. Wayne County Criminal Justice Center in Detroit is officially open. This project, as you may know, has taken 13 years. It's cost more than half a billion dollars to get to this point, but the first official business got underway at the new building this morning. The Justice Center consolidates the third district court, juvenile court, the prosecutor's office, and the sheriff's office, which were previously spread across different locations. It also features a new county jail, which can house 2,500 inmates. All right, getting a ch quick check outside. It is a beautiful night following a beautiful day in Detroit. Uh, in just five days, the city's going to be bustling, of course, with Lions fans very eager for the season opener. Yeah, going to feel a little bit like football weather, too. Ron <laughs> Hilliard joins us now. Ron, we'll see temperatures drop into the mid-50s tonight. That's right, and some locations getting down as low as the 40s. Here is a check at the current temperatures right now. 57 in Port Huron, 64 in Detroit's east side, 53 in Ann Arbor. Temperatures tumble. Now, tomorrow morning as we're heading off for school and work right around 8 o'clock in the morning, some of us in the lower 50s, Detroit, for example, 54, but a few locations will still be in the 40s coming back in the afternoon from home and uh, coming back from school, coming back from work and depending on your location around 3 o'clock, about 79 degrees. So 
as we go into the weekend, we will start to see a cold front coming through, dropping down temperatures Friday evening. We're in the lower 70s as so a lot of people will have activities and a lot of games underway. Showers and thunderstorms will be moving through southeast Michigan. Here's a live look right now as we look into Mount Clemens. Coming up, we're going to have more on what to expect for tonight and the rest of the week.